A very warm welcome and thanks for clicking on to the 60th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. It's hard to believe it's edition 60, isn't it? Um, I think it was back June last year that these Global Weather and Climate Reports began. And there has been, of course, a lot of information put to you um, as a viewer here on YouTube since the beginning of these videos. There is so much to cover in today's video, as always. And we are initially looking at the year-to-date temperature anomaly around the planet. And there is no denying that we have got a lot of warmth around the world at the moment, both in our oceans and our atmosphere, as well as our land masses. Now, year-to-date, interesting enough, Australia is coming out average to below average. I think that's going to change over the next few months as, of course, the Australian Bureau of Meteorology has now declared both El Nino and indeed the Indian Ocean Dipole. And the reason why it's been so delayed compared to NOAA, um, the American-based uh, agency, of course, is the fact that the, the Indian Ocean Dipole and the, more importantly, El Nino has not been coupled with the atmosphere so in other words we've had a bit of a, a la nina type feedback to the atmosphere and it's only in the last wee while that we've really seen the atmosphere kind of lock in with the temperature anomaly profile uh, for the indian ocean of course it is the um it is of course the warm in the west versus cool in the east that, of course, then creates the upward motion over the west basin of the Indian Ocean and sinking over the east. So, therefore, we're seeing enhanced sinking over Indonesia and Australia. So, that increases drought, that increases the chance of heatwave conditions, and certainly we are seeing that at the moment. We'll look at that in just a second. And, of course, the El Nino continues to mature over the eastern and central portion of the Pacific. Now, up until now, we've had a little bit of a false start with regards to westerly wind anomalies. So we've got those, uh, of course, those westerly wind bursts, which uh, push the water, the warmth westwards, uh, or sorry, eastwards over the eastern portion of the uh, Pacific Ocean. And this very warm water is reflecting in drought conditions, heat wave conditions in parts of the Caribbean, and parts of South America. Many parts of South America now pushing temperatures of 45 Celsius uh, in Argentina, um, Paraguay, Brazil, we're seeing low to close to mid 40s. Incredible warmth uh, uh, stacked up uh, in the Northwest Pacific where we've seen ongoing heat wave conditions. Here we've had an unprecedented amount of 30 and 32 Celsius days in Tokyo, for example exceptionally warm record break in nighttime temperatures as well and we are also seeing an area of exceptional warmth across the northwest atlantic now you can see here these pockets of cooler than average albeit very slight and this is the wake of hurricanes moving northwards away from the equator towards the the middle latitude pattern of course and we do have a very very interesting situation developing in the Atlantic Basin, it looks as if the models are now locking into the possibility of a major uh, wind event for the UK Tuesday into Wednesday this upcoming week. We will have details on that in tomorrow's video. So the Monday edition of the European Outlook will look specifically at that uh, possible storm situation. And that was highlighted back two videos ago uh, here on the mm -hmm. channel, the possibility of seeing a wind event across the UK midweek here, but we have had a lot of influence from the tropics this month, not overly unusual, uh, given the fact that we're at the peak of the hurricane season, and when the tropics are active, and we are seeing these recurving situations with uh, tropical cyclones, then you do have a significant influence on our atmosphere. Now, the, uh, the Man Julian oscillation has been fairly weak as well, so when you get the Manjulian oscillation into that West Pacific mode, you're actually increasing the westerly wind anomaly, which enhances and brings on that El Nino uh, event here. So it looks as if there is a bit of awakening of the, the, the Manjulian oscillation from the, you know, the continental maritime region into the western portion of the, uh, the Pacific Ocean. 
and that in turn is is starting to enhance the walker circulation. Of course, you've got the wind, uh, you know, the the upward motion over the west portion of the Pacific, it then climbs, rises up into the upper atmosphere, then gets forced eastwards, and then it descends over the eastern portion of the Pacific. That is known as the Walker circulation, and that is the the textbook El Nino feedback. Uh, the locked-in base state of the El Nino develops when you've got that Walker circulation in, in motion. We've not really seen that properly, uh, but it looks as if it's starting to show uh, show its form now. So we've got the Walker circulation rising air over the western portion of the Pacific, it rises, it moves eastwards, and then it descends over South America. We're seeing that same situation develop in a very similar... Um, the Indian Ocean Dipole uh, has very similar characteristics to the El Nino in the Pacific, where you've got that rising air over the western portion of the Indian Ocean. Uh, it, it climbs up into the upper atmosphere, then gets forced eastwards, and then descends over the far eastern portion of the Indian Ocean, and over Australia, Indonesia, etc., etc. So interesting developments in the atmosphere over the tropical Indian Ocean and Pacific. We will look at that in greater detail as we go forward here. This is an interesting tweet by Dr. Ryan Murray here. I made mention that we would look at this in a little bit more detail. So he, he goes on to say, so obviously the tropics are gaining a lot of attention at the moment, but he goes on to say that I've been tracking keeping track of the number of, of global hurricanes now for almost 20 years, updated every month. I'm actually surprised that the number has trended down slightly over the past four decades. Uh, how often do you see this mentioned in corporate new media climate articles? Well, very interesting stuff actually here. So you can see in better detail this graphic showing that we have seen a bit of a decline. Now, you notice here that, that there was quite a significant uptick in the, the early to mid-90s. Really, the 1990s was quite an active spell. Then we've seen a little bit of a decrease at the turn of the millennium, of course. Then an increase, of course, we had 20, you know, 2004, 2005, where we had, of course, those hyperactive seasons. Then a decrease once again towards 2010. Is that possibly in relation to the solar minimum of 2008, 2009? Don't know. But we've seen then the increase. So increase in solar activity increase in the El Nino we've seen this double spike between 20 what 2014 2016 18 and this drop and then this rise once again and really in the last three or four years we've seen a decline in the global uh, tropical cyclone activity of course when you have that hyperactive season in the Atlantic you tend to shut down the West Pacific when the Atlantic is quieter you tend to have a more active pacific ocean so the two kind of work in tandem here but there is more stuff going on here as well he goes on to kind of write other stuff here with regards to the situation that lucifer there's an article here saying that hurricanes are declining worldwide but the damage from them is increasing well we've obviously increased population there is a lot more real estate now in harm's way of these systems compared to years gone by of course so I thought that would be interesting to show you. Also, he puts a tweet out saying global temperatures compared to climatology climatology in September have gone through the roof at plus 0 0.8 Celsius. Something bizarre is happening with this sudden spike upwards. Highest global anomaly on record, beating out the leap day of February 29th, 2016. So, of course, we are still seeing the rise in the El Nino, of course. So, uh, you know, you can't really say that the incredible spike in temperatures at the moment is, is, is directly down to the El Nino, of course, record warm sea surface temperatures. But we are. There's no getting away from the fact that we are accelerating beyond levels of 2016, which, of course, we've seen the global spike in temperature, both uh, at the surface as well as in, in the upper atmosphere back in 2016 and that was in response to the super El Nino but you can see here the UAH satellite based temperature has uh, gone through the roof during the month of August here in particular and we expect to see so this is that double rise 
uh, since the solar minimum uh, spell, the you know the last time that the global average temperature was below average was actually in 2014. And you can see this double rise, and I think we're going to see this new ceiling developing here, accelerating beyond 2016 in the coming days and weeks to come here. So, uh, yeah, um, no getting away from the, the fact that we are seeing an incredible rise in, in temperature here. And you can see that with the year-to-date temperatures in some areas of cool, but uh, where it's dwarfed in a sea of warmth, as you can see here. Uh, the month of September to date, this going to be the warmest September on record no getting away from that here you can see South America uh, interesting enough we've got uh, southern portions of South America below average we've seen some record breaking snowfall etc uh, etc et in recent times but uh, you know warmth over South America North America much of Eurasia we've got areas of cooler compared to average as you can see here but generally speaking this is going to be the warmest uh, September on record uh, I'm pretty confident to say that here. And then looking at the extremes happening around the world, of course, we had Ophelia make landfall in the North Carolina area, flooding in response to that. Uh, we are going to look at the uh, winter uh, this upcoming week as well, so stay tuned for that. This is the, the predicted rainfall here for the October-December period. Interesting stuff. There's that reflection of both the Indian Ocean Dipole uh, positive. We've got the upward motion through Africa, west portion of the Indian Ocean. Uh, we've got the sinking here, so drought conditions, Australia, Indonesia. Uh, we've got that uh, phase six, seven of the Manjulian Oscillation. That's going to be very interesting to see as we go into the, the, the winter season, how much response that has in the northern hemispheric pattern. Uh, we've got drought conditions and warmth across uh, northern portions of South America, representative of the El Nino, of course. And uh, yeah, we continue to look through the extremes taking place around the world. The easterly QBO is in place now. The last time we had an El Nino with a negative uh, QBO was 2014-15. That in turn tended to be a, quite a warm winter, of course. Record-breaking rainfall in parts of the UK. Uh, more exceptional warmth, mid-40s, Dubai. Um, you know, parts of the United Arab Emirates seeing the warmest temperatures for so late in the season. This is, of course, tweets by Maximiliano Herrera. Record-breaking temperatures as far north as 61 north in Canada, 27.2 Celsius. Remarkable warmth for so far north. Mid-40s almost in Argentina and Paraguay here, of course. El Nino is directly influencing uh, conditions in South America, of course, being closest to that warm waters of the East Pacific. Minimum temperatures uh, of 17 degrees in Estonia, record-breaking warm nights, 18 at Lithuania, 19 in Belarus, 20 in Hungary, 28 Celsius, believe it or not, for a minimum in parts of Greece here. Uh, again, Middle Eastern heat, 47 Celsius in Basra, capital, 44, Baghdad, hottest temperatures for the end of September on record here. Uh, quite a big contrast in the UK and Ireland compared to parts of Southern and Eastern Europe exceptionally warm temperatures here interesting stuff i didn't realize that uh, indonesia had never seen a temperature of 40 celsius but all-time record breaking warmth here hottest months tend to be october and november for java and uh, we've seen temperatures of uh, 36.4 celsius in sarang australia has been seeing some remarkable warmth uh, both by night and by day uh, record time temperature for September for Sydney was achieved. Incredible warmth in Japan, by the way. 25 to 28 Celsius nights. Remarkable stuff here. Even Denmark seen a minimum temperature of 18 Celsius. Remember, they had a, a run of at least 10 weeks in a row where the weekend seen stormy conditions. Uh, also one of the warmest months on record in August 2023 for Cyprus. Remarkable warmth in the North Island of uh, of. Um, Auckland all-time record 28.8 Celsius was achieved here. Um, remarkable warmth across parts of South Africa where temperatures uh, constantly close to 40 Celsius, even at 1,000 metres above sea level. Uh, we've got a world record of uh, temperatures here, uh, maximums of 46, minimums of 34 in Saudi Arabia here. We are world record levels for the time of the year. Um, 
the art.